Hey YouTube, well I've got another build review. This time it's the Dynam Spitfire. On my recent kind of like an unbox video or, or a pre-build kind of review I did for the biplane, that, that's the little purple and white one sitting over there. I mentioned that I picked up another plane when I went to General Hobby. I was out in California recently and went to General Hobby, picked up a couple planes. This is the other one that I got. Uh, the, the Spitfire, obviously one of the most iconic World War II warbirds, I, I think. You know, this was the airplane primarily responsible for keeping Britain in the war during the Battle of Britain. So definitely one of those planes that, that really goes well in a warbird collection. I had kind of put it off because I wanted more, more of the American planes first. But I finally got a chance to get this one, and, and I thought I'd just go through a build review and tell you what I learned about the build process on this plane. So first things first, it feels to me, based on the build, that this might have been one of the later production runs from Dynam. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I didn't look up any of their history or any of that. But the reason I say that is because they got a lot of things really right on this plane that some of the other planes suffered with. But there are still a couple of things that I think need work. So first things first, the wings. Uh, if you remember the Corsair video, I kind of griped about the way the wings went together. And in all of the other airplane builds, there's been some little thing that's been maybe troublesome about them or, or not quite right. These wings went on really well. I like the way they did a lot because the first thing you do is you connect the two wing halves with a spar. Now I recommend when you build this plane, dry fit the spar in both halves. So put it in this half, twist it in, and then take it out and put it in the other half and twist it in and make sure the, the spar seats fully on both sides first before you try joining the wing halves. But once you do that, you join the wing halves and you just kind of spin the wing on until you get it locked. And there is a lock. I'll see. I'll flip the airplane over and show you what I'm talking about. There's a key right there. And, and what you want to do is get those two parts to seat. But once you get those two to seat and that seam is nice and tight, then you're ready to set the wings in. And you basically want to set them in straight down. Uh, all other airplanes I've ever built, there's always been some kind of tilt, like you tilt the front leading edge in first and that goes into a key slot and then you settle, settle the back end. That's not the way these go in at all. You just, you just basically just set them in straight down. And then four little screws to fix them to the airplane. And I'll tell you what, it, it was the first, <laughs> it was literally the first Dynam build where all four of those mounting screws went straight in without any problems. So that's one of the reasons I kind of think maybe this might have been a later production design because the screws lined up really well. The wings went together really well. It was well thought out, very logical, and it seems very secure. So I'm really happy with the wing, way the wings went in. And because I'm kind of one-handing this, I'm not going to show you, and I don't have a receiver hooked up anyway yet. But the retracts, this looks like the best set of retracts I've seen on a Dynam yet. And it's not necessarily that I think they use different hardware. I don't know. But they lay down perfectly inside the airplane. I have yet to find a Dynam plane, and I think if you remember the Hellcat video, uh, those retracts were all over the map. Um, I had to do a lot of work to get those to settle down. So the retracts lay down in the wheel wells real nice. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how they work in flight. I'm a little pensive though, because just like all of the other Dynam birds, and I'll move this around so you can see what I'm talking about. There's the center of gravity mark right there. You see that center of gravity mark? And let me, let me go pull back and, and we'll show you where the wheel axis is. So the wheel axis looks like it's just ahead. Let me see if I can line it up just a little better. So the wheel axis looks like it's just ahead of that center of gravity mark. And I do set my center of gravity back a little bit. They recommend a range of 75 to 80. I go with about 77. That's just been my experience with these Dynamo Warbirds. You can go back a little bit farther than what they recommend. So that that wheel axis looks like it's ahead of the center of gravity mark. Um, and I can tell by looking, there's a line right here. And when you look, it's kind of hard because the camera's hosing it up. But when you look at that line, it basically goes right to the leading edge of the center of gravity. And the wheel axis is just ahead of that line. So I'm kind of hoping, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed, that they finally figured out where the wheels need to go in order, per, order to prevent the tipping. This is the, you know, the tipping that you get on landings with these planes. All the Dynam birds do it. Um, so I'm kind of hoping they figured that out. It looks like they might have. 
it's not ahead of the leading edge, which, you know, I'm okay with that. It's just got to be ahead of the center of gravity. And um, if, if that's the case, then it should land a little better. So anyway, I'm so far I'm digging the wings, the way the wings went on. I like the way the retracts settle into the wheel wells. That looks really good. They're up to their old tricks with this nose cone again, though. This is the same type of arrangement they had on the Mustang, but there was a notable improvement, and that's that the collet, the, the compression collet, this time was actually long enough to set on the shaft. That was the problem I had with the Mustang. It was too short. The shaft was way back. It was way recessed back into here. And by the time you got the collet on, it barely gripped the shaft at all. This collet, I noticed it when I pulled it out of the bag. It looked longer. I didn't measure them, so I don't know. But what I can tell you is that when I put the collet on, it grabbed much more of the shaft than the last one did. And as a result, I didn't have the same kind of difficulty getting the prop nut to squeeze the collet onto the shaft. Uh, I was able to spin the nut on. Now it still slipped a little bit, but just slow, gradual pressure with my wrench, holding the prop steady, and I was able to get that prop nut to really get that collet compression to work. So I think that's another thing that they may maybe figured out. I, I don't know. You know, I just don't know what their timelines were with these different airplanes. So I can tell you that it works better than the Mustang. I'll put it that way. Uh, this is the same class of airplane as the Mustang too, and you can always tell because they'll use 1100 kV motors, they'll recommend a 3S pack, it's a smaller prop, and they use those same goofy little uh, link stoppers on, these plane, on this plane that they used on the Mustang. Now, if you remember the Mustang Maiden, I mentioned that uh, my link stopper came off the elevator. So this time, I went ahead and did some Loctite. I'm still, I'm gonna check it before I fly it again. I get a little hesitant using Loctite, let me pull it around and show you what I'm talking about. I get a little hesitant using Loctite on those nuts because it's the proximity to the plastic horn. I get a little nervous putting Loctite that close to plastic. So I was very deliberate in my use of Loctite this time. I put just a little bit on the tip of the thread and I did the same thing over here on the, on the rudder. There it is. And uh, just a little bit on the tip of the thread. I wiped the excess off of my finger before I put the nut on or put it through the plastic. And then I wrenched it down pretty good with the wrench. So I'm going to give it a try again. I've never had any luck with those, uh, those that type of screw-on uh, link stoppers. I like the Duros with the compression stopper much better. I've never had one of those fail. So I'm going to try it one more time. I'll, I'll do a real thorough pre-maiden checklist again before I go fly. And hopefully I won't have any problems with it. Uh, as far as the rest of the build, typical Dynam, I, I, you know, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again, Dynam airplanes fly really good. Uh, I haven't had any real in-flight type issues other than the Mustang, and that was a mechanical failure. That wasn't really an airframe failure. That was just a mechanical issue. But they fly really well. And judging by the wing, this is a lot like the Thunderbolt wing, that elliptical wing. And the Thunderbolt is probably the easiest flying Dynam plane I've got. Highly visible, real cupcake in there to fly that plane. I like it a lot. I expect this plane will behave very similar to that Thunderbolt based on the size and the wing loading and the cord and, and how much wing area you've got there. So other than that, the rest of the build, very typical Dynam. You know, the tail wheel, just a quick hex nut screws that in. The canopy, all the same, although this time I got to tell you, I didn't see, and I looked several times to make sure, I did not see a uh, canopy sticker or cockpit sticker. So I looked multiple times, maybe it's just an omission, I don't, I don't know what happened, but I don't really care. You know, this is not, I'm not a, like a super scale guy, so I don't freak out about details like that, but this one did not have a canopy sticker. Uh, the pilot bust, uh, really cool for this plane. It's, it's period correct. You know, he's got period, what I consider to be period correct equipment on. Uh, I will tell you that he was a little too wide for the cockpit, so I just took a razor knife and had to shave his shoulders down a little bit. Um, but that fit together well. The canopy, I used my canopy glue, that uh, E500 canopy glue, I think is the name. I'll, I'll put it in the description if I got that wrong. But I used my, my canopy glue on that. Still looks like it's drying a little bit in the back there, but I really like that stuff because it doesn't haze, it doesn't, it doesn't etch the inside, and it dries clear. 
So it's really good glue. In terms of the inside, very typical Dynam. Uh, battery up front. It's this. It's got a uh, compartment that'll fit a 2200. I'm going to stick a four cell in there because I, with my Mustang, I didn't like it on three cell a lot. I imagine this will be very similar. Obviously, I still have some wiring to do because I haven't finished it up yet. I've got to convert this to an XT60 connector and get rid of that T connector. Same servo layout on all the other planes. Plenty of room in there. Um, just a real clean inside once you get the wiring done and you do a couple little twist ties, nice and clean and big, big compartment in there. Plenty of room for a flight computer if you want it. Plenty of room for your receiver and the battery. No problems there. Very typical Dynam. Um, let's see. Oh, the plastics. Uh, that's actually looks like the same muffler system that's on the Mustang, so they're they're interchangeable. Uh, it's got these big, I don't know what caliber guns those are, but big, huge cannon, plastic cannon guns. And believe it or not, I like that better than I like that plastic they did on the on the Corsair. I didn't I didn't like that plastic junk they put on that. That 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 looks like they actually tried. They molded something and and set it up to, to work well with the plane. Uh, the paint job, again, typical dynam, dynam, but this was this is probably one of the best paint jobs that I've seen yet. Uh, you know, from my other videos, I've gone through and I've shown you where some of the some of the uh, pockets that should have been covered weren't, and and you can see these are painted pretty well. The seam on the on the canopy was perfect, unlike the Corsair where it was chewed up quite a bit. Um, so the paint job really really nice on this plane. The decals were a little tricky because they're they're weird shaped. I guess the one benefit you get with the British insignia is their circles. So all you have to do is position them right. You don't have to worry about level. But like the little yellow bands for the wingtips, they're a little tricky to get on. The white one, I actually put that on backwards the first time. This comes, it's kind of like the shape of a chevron. And what I'll tell you is when you put this on, the, you want it to angle back. You'll understand it when you pull the when you pull the decal off the sheet, but angle it back. And when you do that, it'll line up correctly. I put it on the wrong way the first time and mine went like that. <laughs> so my mistake on that, not their fault. On this one, this guy in the back, I, had, I tried several times to get this right. And you can see right here, I ended up pulling it off the paint. So I just touched up a little Sharpie there. But, and I, no matter how many times I tried, I just could not get this thing to lay right. And I wound up with a little bit of a wrinkle. If I had this to do again, what I would do before I took it off the decal sheet is I would just slice this down the middle and I would lay each side on and just fold one over, fold this side over, and then fold the other. When I put the other side on, I'd just fold that over the top, and it'd be perfect. So if I had that one to do again, that's how I'd do it. Um, other than that, the plastic spinner up front, I still have to balance it. You see, I did my, uh, my prop tips. I painted those yellow, uh, just like I always do. Uh, I still need to balance that prop assembly. I haven't done that yet. It doesn't look too bad with a freehand spin. It looks like it's pretty well balanced, but we'll see. We'll put it on the balancer and check it out. Anyway, as you know, I've, I think I've mentioned in past videos that I've switched to L9R receivers for all of my airplanes just because I don't like worrying about things like whether or not I'm going to have connectivity at the other end of the park. So I have to get an L9 receiver in, and I'll do that soon. So keep an eye out on the channel for the Maiden and... I expect this Maiden probably should go pretty well. Everything went together just fine. As far as the build review goes, I'll give this airplane pretty high marks. It's clean, it's tight, it certainly feels like it's a late production design based on some of the other things I've seen Dynam do. Uh, it really seems like they got their act together on this plane. Um, I think the only real gripe I have is probably the arrangement of the wheels, but I'm going to reserve judgment on that. I almost still kind of think they should have been swept a little bit more forward but we'll see i, I don't i haven't read the groups i'm i'm unbiased at this point i don't know how how it's going to work out but i'll if if past experience is any indicator they they tend to tip over i kind of get the feeling these aren't raked forward enough to prevent a tip over but we'll find out we'll go out and fly it and and we'll see what happens on the maiden anyway that's the build review for the dynam spitfire Oh, and a quick update on the biplane. I'm kind of at a crossroads with that plane right now. I'm not sure if I'm going to finish that. Uh, I'll get, I'll do another video on it, but just to give you a quick update, that plane has some problems. Uh, not the least of which are the control surfaces are asymmetrical, meaning that uh, some of the, the ailerons aren't cut evenly on both sides. Um, 
it's not perfectly square. Uh, the, can, the, the material covering, the, the Monaco covering, I did actually get it to a passable point, but, but just. I'm, I'm really on the edge on whether or not I want to start gluing that together yet because every time I look at it, I keep thinking I want to cut that monocoat off and, and start over. But anyway, look for, look for an updated video on that soon, but I kind of put that on pause right now and, and put this diamond together instead. So, and by the way, build time for this plane, it, it, you know, I'm getting to the point with diamond planes where I can get them stuck, stuck together in just a matter of a couple of hours. And half of that time at least is putting on decals and getting them square and straight. So, Regarding the rest of the build, these are just super easy, ridiculously easy airplanes to put together and get them ready to fly. Uh, so anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was helpful. And uh, stay, stay tuned and look for the, uh, the Maiden. All right, take care.